Hey guys, welcome to Kitchen Table Meta. Just want to take a quick second before the video starts and do a little shout out to TCA Gaming. I'll tell you, a friend of I drove about five and a half hours up to Hildebrand, North Carolina, where the shop was located, and we couldn't have had a better time. The staff was friendly and knowledgeable, the play area is spacious and clean, and they had a wide range of products. They had Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, Dragon Ball Super, and even the Final Fantasy card game, which is extremely hard to find locally, so it was really cool to see it there. We also found out TCA Gaming is one of the largest sellers of Pokemon singles on eBay, so if you play Pokemon, definitely check them out. I have all of TCA Gaming's information, including the eBay store in the description, so check them out after the video. And remember guys, it's really, really important that we support a local gaming store, because without them, we wouldn't have a place to play. So thanks a lot, guys, and enjoy the video. Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome to round three of the TCA Gaming Store Tournament. I am playing Vegeta Hand Destruction on the left, and my opponent Bradley Crabtree is playing Mono Blue Vegeta on the right. And so here we go. First thing we're going to do is take a life of Vegeta's ability and then play out a boo. Pretty good little turn one. Now we'd rather see the Broly turn one here, but you know, playing out Boo turn one is never a bad thing. Let's just get a little bit deeper in our deck. And right here, I think what we're trying to do is dig for an objection so we can get a little bit ahead of the Vegeta deck. It's one of the ways that we can help, um, kind of helps us get cards out of his hand quicker is um, using objection um, and getting ahead so we can take two cards out of his hand faster. So here, Bradley's just gonna attack uh, 10,000, 10,000 into Vegeta after playing a uh, Boo of his own. Uh, so yeah, you know, Bradley's doing this, uh, you know, correctly, you, you know, as the more aggressive deck, which the mono blue Vegeta is, you want to be pressuring the hand destruction. It plays a little bit into their plan, uh, but it's still necessary because if you give them too many turns to take cards out of your hand, you'll, uh, you'll be uh, defeated very quickly. So, uh, okay. So here we go. We're going to play out our Broly. Now here we're going to see uh, a bio Broly, a little Broly, another bio Broly. Uh, I think right there I'm trying to figure out which one I wanted to play. And then so we have two Bio Broly's and a Little Broly. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to pick out the Little Broly. And the reason why is because we don't have an objection this turn. And because of that, we want to have a play for next turn. Because we know that we're going into turn three and we don't really have a play in our hand. So what I want to do here is I want to pick out that Broly so I can play something the next turn. This also protects my Broly just in case he might have something I'm not thinking of that can kill it. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think Mono Blue does have anything to kill it. Uh, but it's still, it just gives us a turn three play and it's a little bit safer you know, going into the, um, the next turn. Uh, another thing about this matchup, this is actually the, the, uh, the second, actually the third Vegeta deck in this tournament that, that I've uh, played against or, you know, have seen. And all three of them were different. We have a, a Vegeta hand destruction deck in the tournament, a mono blue Vegeta and a blue red Vegeta. So it's cool that this kind of shows how versatile Vegeta is as a leader. Okay. So Bradley is going to go here and play another boo. So that's uh, boo number three here. Uh, Boo is a fantastic one drop card. I'll talk about him a whole lot, but he's essentially a free card. When you play him, you draw a card and the uh, fantastic about uh, thing about him is he can also combo, you know, whenever he's in the, uh, the battle area. And so, uh, you know, essentially he's just a free combo. He's also a really good card adding into, into your deck just to kind of create some consistency in your deck. Um, you know, he allows you to dig through your deck and kind of get those important cards like, uh, you know, objection or result of training, any of those cards that you want later in the game. It's a, it's always a great card to put in there to, to try to dig to them. Okay, so here Bradley's attacking 10,000 to 10,000, Vegeta into Vegeta. Again, just doing what he's supposed to be doing. I want to use the boo here to go up to 15,000 and uh, win that combat. Again, I mean, he's he's playing the matchup perfectly. You know, he's he has to put pressure on Vegeta. He can't let me get to late game or, um, you know, the, the, the match can be very easy, you know, on my side. Uh, you know, the more cards I take out of his hand here, Bradley's going to be playing the uh, third uh, boo. So uh, very good. Uh, and also, you know, all these one-drop... Um, uh, battle cards add up too. They add up, you know, over the course of the game and really protect his his Vegeta. So, you know, they're never a waste, you know, especially with Boo. So here we're going to uh, take a life and awaken. Now, this is going to be a really good turn for us. Uh, I do get a little bit ahead of myself here and actually forget to take the card uh, from my uh, my ability, though. But I did announce it and he, uh, Bradley was uh, nice enough to help me out there make sure I get my card, which is a big deal. You know, being a card short right here could have really uh, could really change this turnaround. So... So here we're going to play out our second Broly, and then uh, we're going to look through our hand here. Now, again, here we're just looking for anything that we can play, uh, you know, hopefully maybe another Broly or, you know, something to play later in the game. But unfortunately, uh, we whiff, which is uh, very bad. So we've actually had a terrible start here. We've had um, no objection, which is brutal in the uh, in the Vegeta versus Vegeta mirror. Uh, we've also missed on our Broly, which is, you know, really bad for our card advantage. It's the thing that, you know, what we're, our, 
our deck is trying to do. And so, you know, we're in a pretty bad um, start here. But the good thing about this game and the reason why I like it so much is even though you have a bad start, it definitely does not dictate the whole game. And you draw so many cards that you can easily kind of get yourself out of these uh, bad spots very quickly. Okay, so we're moving on here to Bradley's next turn. And again, you know, Bradley's in an awesome spot. He's been putting a lot of pressure on Vegeta. Now, now that I'm flipped, it does save me a little bit from Vegeta. And uh, he still has six life. So it's going to be, you know, he's not going to be able to pressure me very much this turn. Um, one thing I always talk about, though, and, I, and I'm, I think it's something that Bradley does this turn, is you can use the the cards you have in your battlefield as like your second hand and it's very good um strategy against the vegeta hand destruction because i can't really affect those cards the deck struggles affecting cards on the field and so you can use those cards to kind of still pressure vegeta in this situation which is uh, a very very uh, good move and so here bradley's going to play out another one drop uh kai and saiyan sun goku now i love this one drop especially if you have a lot of the goku cards in your deck um it really can be um very powerful it's similar to the boo it draws you a card and still stays is out there uh to combo with now he's gonna pick up um godson goku here um the fantastic uh drop too he, in my opinion he's probably the second best finisher in the game um he's fantastic if you're running the goku engine as well because he you know you can evolve and play him for a little bit cheaper uh and again just a very strong card especially against the hand destruction deck now i talked a lot about it in my uh matchup guy but i do often um cyborg in uh godson goku uh, as my seven drop over beerus when i'm playing against matchups like vegeta here and now bradley's going to play out another one drop uh the uh, bulma god tempter now this allows him to search through his deck and pick out a weiss uh, unfortunately the only weiss that it hits right now is um the resting attendant weiss which is the one where if you play him out you can take your top card and put it down as energy um the cool thing about bradley's deck that i've noticed um after watching the video a couple times here and and, and playing in the matchup is that he runs all of the one drop cards and those cards and they're very efficient you know if you can if you can take advantage of those cards because right now he has um five cards in the field um which you know equals out to be uh 25 000 power worth of combo potential just in these cards and every one of these cards gain value for him each one of these cards have drawn him another card and so he still has a tons of cards in hand and it's really hard again for the vegeta hand destruction deck to pressure um you know these battle cards and so what you're going to see is he's going to get a lot of value off of these cards and it's you know it's really stinks whenever you're playing the hand destruction and seeing your opponent play out card after card after card which is normally very good for you and instead they just get a card back each time and so it's like these cards are just free okay so here for on uh on turn four we have we get uh, two cards out of his hand with the rampaging life form bio broly evolve now this is a key card for the deck i talk about it all the time but it's very strong and very important in the matchup and it, you know when you evolve it it makes your opponent have to choose two cards out of his hand now this is a turn later than what we normally want to we would normally want to play this on turn three and this uh you know and, and this would be you know essentially the second one which would have you know be uh would be four cards out of his hand unfortunately we didn't get ejection we didn't get any acceleration and so we have to play it on curve which uh, really stinks in the Vegeta mirror. Oh, I meant to talk about it too, but also Bradley didn't take a life next last turn, which is a little bit of a play mistake. Um, again, you know, in this situation, he should be taking a card um, out of his life, and that way he can he can awaken and start uh, drawing more cards. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, Bradley chose not to, but he did, you know, say, "Hey, last turn I should have done that." And this turn, he does take a life, and so you know, now he's getting back on track, which uh, you know is good. Now it gets a lot of the aggressive decks doing what Bradley is doing is correct. You want to save your life total as much as possible, but in this matchup, it's a little. Uh, it's a little ill-advised to uh, to do that. Now he plays out Weiss, uh, the resting attendant, like we talked about earlier. Just gives him another mana, and he's going to attack uh, ten thousand into fifteen thousand uh, Vegeta into uh, Vegeta. Now here he's going to combo with uh, Boma, and this brings him up to fifteen thousand. So it's fifteen thousand to fifteen thousand. Now again, this is extremely extremely smart play by Bradley, and this is what I'm talking about by taking advantage of these one drops. You know, make him like your second hand, and he's putting pressure on the hand destruction deck. And it's an extremely, extremely good move. Now I had to use my um, Piccolo here to go up to twenty five thousand, um, but uh, you know, again, he put so much pressure on me just with cards that he's already getting value of. Now, moving on to our next turn here, which will be our turn five. 
you know, we have a couple options. Now, we're lucky that we do have a lot of the one uh, the one cost uh, counter cards in our hand, but it's a little bit late in the in the uh, round to kind of take too much advantage of those. We're going to keep one in our hand to use, uh, and now we're going to attack 15,000 and 10,000. Now, the reason why we tack into here, and this is actually a really bad uh, mistake by me, we're attacking it here because he's going to flip next time. So he's at five life. No matter what we do, he we cannot stop him from awakening, so we might as well get the card from Vegeta. Now, what I should have done here, though, is attack with the Bio Broly first, and this puts a lot more pressure on Bradley. Uh, essentially, you know, if he takes the damage, he'll go to three life. And if he doesn't want to take the damage, he'll have to use a lot of cards out of his hand or the majority of battle cards in his field to survive it. That would have put a lot more pressure on Bradley. It would have been a much better play by me. But instead, I attack 15,000 into 10,000 and Bradley just takes it, gets the card and goes to four. Now here, I think I'm at realizing my mistake, but I'm still trying to you know plan out my turn here, try to figure out what I want to do. It's uh it's a little tough to be attacking uh, with the Vegeta hand destruction, but in the Vegeta mirror, you really have to start putting pressure on them because you can't stop them from awakening. So here we're going to do another evolve and take two more cards out of Bradley's hand. Again, this would have been such a better play if I would have done this differently. If I would have you know evolved before attacking and then attacked with the Bio Broly first, this would have put a lot of pressure on Bradley, and I think would have resulted in a uh, much better turn for me here. And so here, you know, Bradley's taking his time, you know, trying to figure out what card he what cards he wants to discard. Uh, I can't see what two cards he did he did discard, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully they're two good ones. Okay, so now we're gonna think about you know how we're gonna do attacks here. Because like I said, in most matchups, um, you know, you don't want to attack with your Bio Brothers. They're very um, important and you don't want to awaken your opponent. Now here I'm like, uh, you know, where it gets the Vegeta Vegeta Mirror, and you know, we need to be pressuring him. So we're gonna attack twenty thousand into ten thousand. And here, Bradley will awaken, going up to 15,000 and drawing two cards. And here, again, it just he can easily kind of stop this attack with, um, you know, two of his uh, battle cards in play. And again, these are completely free, and it's a very, uh, it's very frustrating to play against so many value cards as the hand destruction deck. And honestly, it's one of the deck's big weaknesses, which is why we put more uh, Awakening Sun uh, Goku in the deck. Okay, he's going to use Sensu being here to go up to twenty, and then use one of his boos to go up to twenty-five. And so here we're going to attack again with another. Um, Raging uh, Life Form Bio Broly. 20,000, 20,000. He's just again going to use another boo. Go to 25. And now we're going to pass off the turn. Again, a very good defensive turn by Bradley. And a stream, in my opinion, a very bad uh, misplay by me, which resulted in him probably being at one less life here. Um, or at least getting another card out of his hand. All right, so we're going to move on to Bradley's turn here. He's going to play out his sixth mana. This is a big deal too. I mean, he's he, Bradley's been able to to play a lot of ramp cards and really get ahead on, on uh, energy, and it's really going to show here. I mean, at six at six energy, there's a lot of threats he can play out. There's the uh, five drop Vegeta Prince of Speed that's very scary, especially for the Vegeta Hand Destruction deck. Um, there's also you know Beerus that he can play out here and, and destroy one of my Bio Brolies. I and mean, there's a lot of threats that can come out here, and the fact that he's got here so. Uh, easily is very scary for us. So now he's going to attack 15,000 to 20,000 into one of the Bio Brolies. Now, again, you're going to see here that um, Bradley does a great job taking advantage of these free one drop cards. And like I said, it's very scary for the, the hand destruction decks. So now he's going to do 20,000 into 20,000, which would kill one of the Bio Brolies. Now, again, he's doing this for free. He used nothing out of hand, which is a bad, very, very bad for us. And uh, again, we're just going to take it, let him kill the guy. Um, in my opinion, I couldn't afford to use a card out of my hand uh, to protect one of the Bio Brolies. Um, I just had to say, okay, with a boo dying is, you know, I'm gonna have to take that as a, as a win and, uh, you know, uh, do what I can with my hand again, as probably would have been a good idea to, uh, to keep a, a, um, an energy up for me, uh, for a counter here, since I do have a green counter in hand and now Bradley is going to play Vegeta Prince of Speed. We we're just talking about him. Uh, he's extremely, um, good card. Honestly, one of my favorite cards in the, in the entire set, uh, it really stinks. He's kind of locked behind, um, the uh, starter deck, but he's extremely potent, very good card, and very, very good against Vegeta Hand Destruction. Now, here I'm going to have to counter this card. Uh, in my opinion, I probably should have countered the Vegeta attack um, so I could save on the Bio Brolies, but in my opinion, I just couldn't lose uh, two uh, Bio Brolies. I didn't care to lose one. To me, you know, it's a little bit of an advantage. Uh, well, I guess it could be perceived that way, uh, but I could not lose both. Uh, it's too important to keep one, especially when I'm down on energy like this. 
All right, so moving into our next turn, you know, we're kind of in a pickle here. You know, again, you know, he has a lot of pressure on board, which we don't like to see. Uh, he still has a lot of cards in hand, uh, and we're going to have to try to make a play to get some of these cards out of his hand and start putting some pressure back on him um, and start pressuring his life total here. And there's a couple ways we can do that, too. You know, the the six drop um, Rampage and Horror um, Broly is a great choice. Uh, there's also, you know, I could just use like uh, Beerus or some other things. But actually, we're going to choose the, uh, the Rampage and Horror. It's like I've seen this before. Uh, and now we're going to choose two cards at random out of his hand here. Now we get uh, Vegeta, the three drop Vegeta critical and the four drop Goku critical. Now, in my opinion, these are two really bad hits. Uh, I didn't want to get these. I want to get something that's, uh, you know, like a counter or sensu bean or one of his piccolo cards. I want to get some defensive cards here. Not too much. Uh, these, these threats that really don't matter too much to me. Uh, it's easy to stop their attacks. And then it's, and then, you know, Vegeta actually, um, gains something from that. You know, if he plays out one of those cards and then Vegeta kills it, it's, I'm actually up a card. So it's kind of stink to get both of those cards, but regardless, we're going to attack 15,000 to 15,000 Vegeta into Vegeta. See what we can do here. Draw our card. All right, all right, past Dusty. Don't forget to draw your card. Oh, wait, I have it there. Okay. Uh, and then, okay, so here again, you know, we're in a pretty good spot. You know, we're not bad. It's four to four, you know, uh, and we're attacking in here, you know, getting a little bit of card advantage. You know, the, the Bio Broly, I'm sorry, the uh, Rampage and Horror Broly really has been putting a lot of pressure into this game. A 30,000 double attacker is not to be um, taken lightly. Now, here we're attacking 30,000 to 20,000 uh, Broly into Vegeta. Now there could have been an argument made. I think I maybe should have attacked Vegeta here and started pressuring his life total again, but I didn't think I could handle this Prince of Speed too many more turns. And again, you know, the Vegeta Vegeta mirror is, is more about life total than it is about hand size because it's really hard to run them out of cards. And again, I was just inexperienced at the time. You know, this is, is one of the, one of my, uh, my earlier games. And so I really think this was a play mistake and I should have pressured the uh, Vegeta instead. And so here, um, Bradley's going to use Piccolo to go up to 30,000 and then use his last card to go up to 35, um, stopping the attack. And again, you know, and even Vegeta has 5,000 less health than the, the Prince of Speed Vegeta. And so because of that, it would have required an, an extra card for him to use. And I just really think that was, again, another bad attack and kind of shows my inexperience with the mirror, uh, well, at least the mono blue mirror uh, at that time. And it's really fun to kind of watching these videos back and kind of seeing all these play mistakes you make, you know, from a long time ago. Like, I think this video was like maybe three weeks old, maybe four weeks old now. And so it's just really funny to see my inexperience and see some of the, the bad play mistakes I'm making because they are pretty bad in my opinion. I mean, they're really changing the course of this matchup i'm giving him a lot of value um really for no reason okay so going on to bradley's turn here you know again bradley's in control he made it through the turn with a twenty thousand uh, dual uh, double attacker or double strike uh, attacker on the board and that is you know very scary as the hand destruction player i don't want to lose two life um and so it's going to he's going to put a lot of pressure on our hand here uh just with that card alone you know not to even mention you know some of the other cards he could easily have all right, so it looks like Bradley's trying to trying to figure out the, which way he wants to kill me. I'm sure he has uh, multiple options in hand here. Now, again, this is a, a terrifying uh, turn for us. You know, we're, we're really scared going this turn. Our our uh, Rampage and Horror Broly is exposed, so he can be killed. And if that happens, our threats are next to nothing. Um, also, you know, our health, our, our, our life is pretty close as well. So that's pretty scary. So here Bradley's going to use his uh, Vegeta's ability. Now this is something you don't see a lot because most Vegeta's are multicolor, but um, because uh, because Bradley has seven energy, uh, Vegeta does get plus ten thousand power. So he's at twenty five thousand to fifteen thousand critical, which is terrifying. Now this is something we don't want to have to deal with as a hand destruction deck. Uh, we really don't want the leader to be pressuring us as much as he already is. Now he's going to use further destruction Champa as a combo piece, which gives um, Vegeta dual strike, and so now he's a thirty five thousand dual striking critical uh powerhouse and that is again something we do not want to have to deal with um this is uh, you know not what we want as the hand destruction deck you know we want to uh, stop our opponent from awakening and so that way his his leader is almost insignificant so here we're going to use uh, our sensu bean to go up to twenty thousand. now we still have quite a hole to uh, climb out of here um but we actually choose to do something here that i want to talk about in depth uh, we're going to use krillin to go to 25 and then use jocko to bounce the further uh destruction and uh, go up to 30,000. Now, 
here's the thing. <laughs> At this time, I am under the impression, and you know, the main reason why Jocko was in the deck, we did run four of them, that that actually stops the dual strike as well. And so even though I won the combo, which I mean combat, which is awesome, in my mind, you know, Jocko also stops dual attack. So whether that went through or not, I would only take uh, one damage. Uh, I wouldn't take two. And now, as we'll see later on in the game, that is not the uh, that is not how it works. So here, uh, he's going to play out Beerus, and since he does have five more energy, he will choose to kill our Broly. Now, this is something that we figured could have happened, and I, again, that's why it's such a bad play for me not to have attacked the Vegeta, uh, because you know if we lose the Broly, then we're only uh, we've only killed one card. Now, if we would have pressured Vegeta last turn, he actually would be in a really weird spot this turn where he might not be able to use his ability and pressure us so hard with his Vegeta. So, again, just such a bad mess uh, mess up by me, uh, especially playing against the mono blue uh, Vegeta. You really want to pressure their life total a lot so that way they can't take advantage of that 10,000 uh, buff through their, um, their uh, hero skill or leader skill, sorry. All right, and so here, you know, Bradley's trying to figure out, you know, what order he wants to attack. Now, my Vegeta does have Sensu Bean on him, which does bring him up to 20,000. So he is matching each of his threats right now, which is a good thing for us. That is, gives us a little bit of defense. So now Bradley's going to play out uh, Kind Sun Saiyan Goku and look at the top seven. See what he can find here. Now, I'm not sure how many Goku he runs in his deck, but he did miss here, which is good for us. That's revenge for our uh, for our Broly missing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, again, I'm not sure how many he ran. I didn't see any um, Goku other than the Critical Goku and the Godson Goku, so that could be all that he runs. Uh, if so, that might be a little bit uh, of a small number of, of Goku to run, but uh, but honestly, again, I, I don't know how many he runs in his deck, so I really can't make that call. And it, either way, it's super unfortunate whenever your top seven uh, misses, a, um, misses a, a hit there. Good for us, but uh, it does stink. It does sting a whole lot. All right. And again, Bradley's just kind of taking his time here, trying to figure out what order he wants to attack. The Goku that he just played also gives him a little bit of pressure against the Sensu Bean. And so, you know, he has a lot of choices here. And he's actually going to uh, choose to pass the turn here, which uh, really surprised me and still looking at now really does surprise me. Um, I think maybe his thinking about it was that uh, he didn't want to give me two more cards. Uh, but, you know, chances are the amount of pressure he's going to put is greatly going to make up for the two cards that I could have played. And I think it was uh, a little bit of a, a mistake from Bradley for uh, by not attacking there. He could have put a lot of pressure on me and uh, and really could have, uh, you know, ate through my hand. But there also could be an argument made that maybe he just didn't want to, you know, chance give me a threat. I think I only have like four or five cards in hand. And so maybe he was thinking, well, if I don't attack him, don't give him cards, I can overpower him the next turn, uh, which, you know, is a very um, intelligent play. Uh, but I think maybe just a little too ambitious uh, for the current matchup because Vegeta Vegeta really does come down to life management. And anytime you can put pressure on your opponent, you really should in the Vegeta mirror. And so here we're going to attack... 15,000 to 15,000, Vegeta and the Vegeta. Now, here we're just trying to find a threat. We're trying to find something that we want to do here. We do have um, Awakening Sun Goku in hand, so we have something to, to to pressure him with. But we're you know looking through our hands, making sure our options are good, which is always good to do. You know, make sure if you're if you're uh, about to go into a, a pivotal turn like this that you always get as much information as you can. Now, Bradley is going to Sensu Bean, putting him up to 20,000, and this pretty much you know, once he Sensu Beans here, it lets me know that hey, you know what, I probably can't win this turn, um, and so we're going to play as defensive as possible while still going to put some pressure on. So we're going to play out Awakening Rage Sun Goku, uh, do five six the uh, Vegeta Prince of Speed and Kind Sun to uh to kill them and now we have a triple attacker in play now Bradley only has two life so the triple attacker doesn't matter too much but this lets us to play a little defensively by killing two of his guys and put a little pressure on him and so again because of that sensu bean i think it's very unlikely that we're going to win the game here and so i wasn't prepared to go all in here or you know try to um to, to, to win the game this turn and so we're going to attack twenty five thousand into twenty thousand awakening sun goku into vegeta now, again, you know, Bradley has a tough decision here, too. Now, looking at his hand here, uh, now we get a clear shot of it. You know, he does have a lot of, uh, still have a lot of cards. Looks like he has six cards in hand, which is still good at this stage of the game versus the hand destruction. Um, and, and so he, he has a lot of options. And, you know, this is, again, a pivotal turn for him as well. Uh, and he's going to use the Weiss, very smart play, to go up to 30,000. Which we knew could be possible. You know, there was a there was an argument to be made that I could have made buff them a little bit. But again, you know, I don't see myself winning this turn, and I'm planning to win the following turns. So I want to try to get some threats off the board here, and uh, try to put some pressure on them. 
Again, if it wasn't for that sense of being, I might have actually dumped some cards in my hand and tried to actually win that turn, but it just seemed very um, unlikely to me. It's really hard battling through sense beans, and honestly, the sense bean card is one of the main reasons why blue is so powerful in set one here. All right, so going to Bradley's turn here, I mean, he has a very strong turn coming up. He has a lot of options, like we just said earlier. He has a lot of cards in hand. He didn't have to dump any cards out of hand to survive that turn. I think something we could have done a lot better is to pressure his hand maybe a little bit more. So maybe dumping, like, one card would have been fine to get around Wee, so it would cause him to have to at least dump one card. Uh, and we did have a couple zero-cost cards in hand, too, I think, to be able to do that. But again, you know, we're trying to plan for the, uh, the defense. I'm feeling pretty confident at four life that we can survive this turn, and so I didn't want to overextend. Um, offensively here. So Bradley playing down his eighth energy, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, and so Vegeta is going to use his uh, ability here, going to 25,000. This is something I kept messing up with on each on, on this game. And that's, I, I always like kind of forgot about this ability that he gives him 10,000 power. And so he's going to attack 25,000 to 15,000. And looking back, this would have been a very good reason why I should have maybe pressured him a little bit more because it is pressure. Um, but uh, I probably should have pressured the Vegeta attack maybe a lot more. Um, because he's not, he, he can't let the, the Goku attack go through or he loses. So it's just kind of a bad play by me. Um, and so again, I'm just trying to figure out if I want to negate it. I don't think I have any counters in hand. I can't see my hand, but again, he's going to use that, uh, further destruction Choppa to give his, uh, leader, uh, 10,000 power and, uh, double strike. And we're going to use Draco bounce it and uh go to 20,000 to 25. Now here you'll see uh my inexperience with the card. I'm like, okay, that's all I wanted to do. I'll just take a damage. And uh Bradley's like, "Wait a second, bro. <laughs> What's going on here?" Uh, you know, I I dual attacked you. You take two. Um, and this was um, a surprise for me because, like I said, again, the whole reason we put this in the deck uh, was to get around this card. This is a big reason me and Chris talked about before the tournament, and I was like, this is a very powerful effect. Uh, I guess I should have read the, the uh, card more clearly. And after I read the card here, you know, I do agree with Bradley that, yes, it does stay, um, and I would take two damage. So he is back up to 35,000 to 15,000. Uh, so I put the card back in my hand. I take the two damage. Now, the cool thing that Bradley does here is, uh, you know, Bradley was an awesome opponent, by the way. Super cool dude. Uh, and he's like, hey, man, listen, <laughs> you didn't know what it did. We weren't sure what, how it worked. You don't have to take the damage if you don't want to. And uh, and so I was like, okay, well, let me think about that. You know, I'm not sure if I still want to take the damage now, um, like I said prior to it. So let's look at let's look through the, the plays here. And as you see in our hand, we do have ways to make sure we don't take damage from this. Now, unfortunately for us to do that, we're going to have to bounce this back in his hand, making this a threat later in the game. And to me, in this pivotal part of the um, game, I don't think I could have... Um, I don't think I could have took a, uh, took two critical damage. I can't lose two cards because his other throw on the board is a, a, a double striker as well, um, which would result in me losing the game. So, uh, you know, me in my opinion, these two cards I get off um, the, uh, the life are very important. Um, and so I'm trying to decide how important they are because to survive this, I'm going to have to... Uh, to use a mana, it looks, I'm sorry, an energy to survive it. So this is a very uh, tough decision for me. And honestly, it's a game deciding decision. Plus, not to mention, I'm already frazzled that, that this card doesn't work the way I thought it did. I, I was almost uh, uh, certain that Jocko would bounce this card and he doesn't get dual attack anymore. I'm sorry, double strike anymore. And so it was very uh, frustrating to see that uh, that's not how it works. And so we're going to pay him, pay an energy here, go up to uh, 25,000. And then we're going to use uh, two more, go up to 10 more, which is 35,000. And then I have to bounce his, uh, his card here because the, uh, the Jocko is a, isn't a may you have to do it. And so I was letting him know that, yes, I do have to bounce it. And here we, me here we're talking about, I was like, man, I really wish this wasn't a, uh, a, a may. I wish I, I wish I didn't have to do this. And so me and him read it to double check, make sure, but this actually happened in round one as well. And so we did bounce it. Uh, again, me just being frazzled, not thinking. Uh, I also comboed uh, too much, actually. So I also wasted a card here comboing as well. So we actually just had to play the Jocko in the one drop. We didn't actually have to play um, the other boo to, to do it too. So it was a terrible turn for us. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Bradley was awesome. Let us take that hit back and really kind of think through the turn. Uh, but, again, I think it was because of the uh, misunderstanding with Jocko and how it worked. It kind of frazzled me, and I was just like – I was kind of – uh, mad that I, I didn't read the cards properly. It's something I usually don't do. You know, usually I don't, I don't, uh, uh, mess up on card rulings like that, but the game was new. Like I said, you know, at this point, you know, this is only made my sixth or seventh game. So, um, 
you know, definitely a common mistake, but looking back at it uh, cracks me up. Now here, it looks like Bradley's going to tap out um, for Godson Goku, the card we know that's in his hand. Now that would have beat us. That's enough to kill us 100%. Now, but Bradley doesn't know that. And instead, he takes his time. I preach this all the time. Take your time, really think out your plays. And Bradley does that here. He, he really demonstrates why it's so important and makes this masterful play. He takes a completely different line of play, which instead of maybe winning him the game, is 100% for sure going to win him the game. Now he's going to play out uh, overflowing Son Goku here, which gets 25k on his turn. And then he's going to combo with that dual uh, double attack card that we gave him. And then, you know, continue to combo until that card gets out of reach. And there's absolutely no way that he can lose the game. It was a brilliant, masterful play by Bradley and just shows um, what happens when you take a little bit of time and think out your plays. Now, Bradley was, again, an awesome opponent. I loved playing with him. He's super cool. We stayed in touch. He's a great friend now. And uh, really, I love this game. Now, we did end up taking the next game going 2-0-1 in the series. So we did get a draw. Uh, so, guys, stay tuned. Let us know what you think about the, the game in the comments below. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.